Barry here. Hey, Booney, you did a, had a good chance to shuffle around your bullpen tonight uh, to mix and match in those situations. What was behind the whole strategy and of it, and how'd you feel? Obviously, you won, so you have to feel good about it, but is this what we're going to be looking forward to throughout the playoffs? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all hands on deck, and everyone's going to have to play an important role on a given night. You know, low coming in and getting getting a big double play, getting us out of an inning there, out of a jam. Um, you know, obviously, Wandy coming in and and being real efficient, going through that lefty lane, and then and then Clay, um, really good to get him back out there. I thought he threw the ball really well. You know, hits the first guy just to check on my heart. And uh, and then I thought he threw the ball really well to to finish off a, a really well pitched night. We'll stay there with Susan. Terry Francona just said he thought that early on they would gotten the pitch count up for Garrett Cole. What was your opinion of Cole and how he settled down after, particularly after the home run? Yeah, I thought I thought Garrett was really good. I thought he I, I thought his breaking ball was really good. Um, I thought he was unpredictable. I thought he I thought he did a good job of mixing pitches. The one big time jam that he got in. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's able to make some huge pitches to get out of the inning. Um, you know, <clears throat> I thought we we're, you know, gave him a couple free bases there in the first couple innings, but really got really good defensively as the game wore on and made some really good plays behind him. But I thought Garrett was, I thought he did a really good job of, of, you know, kind of owning the moment, um, being unpredictable, and, and I thought his breaking ball was was really really on point tonight. But and then the few times you know he was backed into a corner, he made some pitches. We'll stay there with Eric. Just to follow up on Susan's question, Tito said he thought the fourth inning, the quick, I think it was eight pitches, kind of settled Garrett down. Did you think <coughs> that way too? Yeah, no question. I mean, you know, what was he at sixty through three? Um, yeah, I mean, you got to at some point if you're going to get deeper into the game. Uh, you know, early on, it looked like, man, let's let's hope we can get through five, and and to pitch into the sixth, seventh inning there um, was huge, and and that fourth inning went a long way in helping that out. In the second row, and you're right. And just another question on Garrett: How much did that strikeout of Jimenez in the third kind of change everything for him moving forward? I don't know that it changed. I, I just thought it was he executed, you know, and and that, you know, maybe the at bat of the game right there, and. Uh, you know, he was in, in some trouble there and kept making pitches. And, uh, you know, that's it was good to see him go out in, in the first, you know, Yankee home game in front of fans in the postseason um, and deliver that kind of performance. Uh, first row on your left, Brian. <coughs> Brian. Aaron, you left some wiggle room before announcing him as the game one starter. What told you he was the right guy for this moment? Yeah, it was more a product of how well Nestor and, and Sevy look. Um, so, and I just wanted to not just race out to it. And, you know, so there wasn't much to it other than me wanting to think about it a little bit, talk to some people, see what the best way to line it up was. And, you know, so I was kind of going Garrett the whole time, and but wanted to at least sit on it for a minute. Uh, Ron in the second row. Uh, on Donaldson, how much do you understand him getting caught up in the moment there, not running, and how much, especially given a few times you talked to him during the season on similar things, that you're angry and puzzled why? Yeah, I, I mean, it's a unique one um, down that line like that. You're kind of, you're kind of body language in it. I actually ha haven't even seen the play yet because I was watching the, I was getting out of the way of some people to see where it was. I thought it was a home run off the bat. Um, so I, I got to look at it a little bit better. You know, if if he's if he's getting it right away, is it is it an automatic double with, you know, he, he ain't the fleetest of foot. So, um, you know, we got to make sure we're, you know, we're, we're getting where we need to get to. And so I'm glad it didn't end up hurting us. Uh, Andy in the first row. Uh, Harrison Bader kind of came into a potentially awkward situation at uh, – Originally, when he got here, a popular teammates traded. He comes in in a walking boot. Uh, how did he? How did he handle that? Was it uncomfortable at first, or was that on a personal level ingratiating himself with new teammates? Was that any kind of a process? I didn't sense that. I I, I felt right away. You know, obviously a local kid that grew up a Yankee fan. Um, 
you know, I, I thought right away he endeared himself to us. And, you know, he's a, he's an outgoing guy, you know, um, right away. I could tell he was really excited to be here. I think he, I think he was aware and had some levity to the situation, like understanding what you said, you know, we traded a popular teammate and I show up in a walking boot, you know, he, he kind of made light of that. Um, but we also knew we were getting a really good player and, um, you know, obviously a big home run there to, to get us started uh, tonight, coupled with obviously what he brings in the outfield. On your left, Aaron. Aaron, is there more significance to winning a game one in a five-game series as opposed to the usual seven games? Got to win three in this series. So however you get there, um, if you can, you know, you want to rack them up when you can. Um so I guess it's one less to win than in the seven games, so maybe a little more significant. But, look, it's it's hard to win playoff games. Um, it's certainly g really good to get the first one at home. Dan, standing on your right. Aaron, kind of Falefa, you know, had his ups and downs this year, and to make that error right out of the gate and then kind of, you know, recover from that, make some nice plays. How how what good was it to see him kind of calm himself down, I guess, after that play? Yeah, really good. And, and that's what he's done all year when he has made that – that air, he, he bounces back really well. Um, you know, obviously then gets a big, big hit in the corner, um, to set us up. Um, so yeah, it was good that he, you know, got more chances and kind of, kind of bounced back from it. I'm not sure he gets Rosario anyway on that ball up the middle, but, and I think that kind of went into it cause he's trying to get that quick transfer going. Um, but yeah, it was really good to see him answer, you know, a little bit of adversity that, we're all going to face, hopefully, over what's a few weeks of baseball here, just like the regular season, and and you know, it happens within these games, and and he answered the bell. Garrett, you look at that third inning early on; they they really made you work the third inning, in particular the home run to Quan, and then the bases loaded twice. Just how were you able to get yourself out of that inning? Uh, I thought we played good defense, picked each other up, and uh, made good pitches. Uh, Ultimately, for the most part, throughout the inning. Stay on your right, Garrett, with Joel. Garrett, you mentioned good defense. How important is Bader cutting that ball off before it gets to the wall to stop a second run from scoring there? Yeah, I mean, excellent defensive play there. Um, reminds me of a ball George cut off in the World Series a few years ago to hold Howie Kendrick to a single, and we capitalized on it. Um, Oswaldo made a great play up against the wall. The guy continues to just be so impressive. And, um, yeah, Donaldson was down and dirty for us, too, in the hot corner. Three rows back on your left, Garrett. Garrett, your first home playoff start here. What did it mean to come off the mound, not just with the lead, but to get that response from the crowd? Yeah, it was, it was very special for me. Um, It was very special. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, it's not the game's not over. You know, you got traffic. I left with traffic, so um, it's not the most comfortable time to acknowledge the crowd. But I certainly felt it um, and appreciated it. And um, I thought they were in every pitch tonight. And um, what a wonderful experience to have them behind us. On your left, Garrett. Garrett, what's the overall feeling winning game one of such a short series? Um, yeah, good day's work. And uh, get ready for the next one. It's kind of simple. In the second row, Garrett, Ron. Garrett, you had pitched, obviously, here with Houston in the postseason. And you'd been looking forward for a long time to pitching in pinstripes here in how did you keep yourself calm about it and how much did you appreciate and get pumped up while you were doing it versus then turning to focus what you were doing? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, it was just a really awesome experience overall. Um, I just, sometimes when you, you feel the crowd or the energy, um, you know, it, it sometimes can become a little easier just to quiet things down because it's so loud. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does to me. So, and 
um yeah i mean it's just a just what a what a great atmosphere and it was my dad's birthday today and so it was it was a good day uh, far back in the left center garrett 60 62 pitches through three uh 35 through four five and six what was different for you um You know, not not a whole not a whole lot. Um, you know, we had a couple of breaks not go our way early um, that we had to kind of navigate around, and the third was obviously, you know, it was just kind of unfortunate that I thought Rosario made a pass at that fastball, but it got him up on the on the hand, and so that. It was that was kind of unfortunate not to make a better attempt at, at retiring him because it, it kind of extended it. Um, but I just got like early contact in that one inning, and 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 that's that that kind of reset it, and and that, that's the beauty of you know having the DH. You know, like seven years ago in Pittsburgh, it might have been a tougher decision. You know, in the fourth, you know, tie game, double switch kind of thing. So. Um, you just keep grinding and just keep making making pitches, and you know if if one of those if you know you're fortunate to catch one of those quick innings, um, you know you just you have more opportunities to to find that. You know it doesn't always have to come in the first three. Did you try to pitch a contact? Yeah, just well, I mean this team is like extremely hard to strike out, like twenty twenty ninth or twenty eighth in the league in terms of strikeouts. So. You know, they, they put the ball in play. They lead the league in infield hits. Um, they have good batting average and bat-to-ball skills. So across the across the, uh, across the the lineup. So, you know, it was I, – I, I was foreseed – I foreseen tried to – I don't know what the hell I'm saying there, but <laughs> I, I, I had foreseen trying to work out of traffic um, because of undesirable contact. So uh, I was lucky to make pitches in those situations. Uh, first one on your left, Brian, then Lindsay. How, how much of a battle was it to keep your emotions and excitement in check having a playoff start? Like what was the, the early part of the day like compared to a regular season start? Honestly, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a whole lot different. I, I, uh, I was – I'm, I was in the tunnel during the you know, the festivities with the lights and stuff because that was just you know, that's not I don't want to be doing that like be walking in or you know with like Swisher running around so <laughs> I was like I just got my stuff done out of the way early and uh, and uh, um, yeah so like outside of that um, is is pretty normal and it was. Uh, Kind of just just relaxing, just to just hear the roar from everybody, you know, the whole time. So what did you, what did you think of Swisher's job out there? <laughs> I, I, I can't comment on that. I didn't really watch it. So. I'll go to Lindsay. I think. Here, like you said, this is an offense that doesn't really strike out, but you wound up holding them to four hits. I think eight strikeouts by the last few innings. Did you feel like you kind of gotten to a point where you made them play your game instead of trying to work towards theirs? Well, I thought that we, I thought that um, uh, there's a, a conscious effort there to uh, be a little more disciplined to the breaking ball at the beginning of the third inning. Um, so we needed to uh, switch gears either in some situations to a different breaking ball uh, or find a different way uh, to get strike one. Um, and then we had, once we had the lead, then um, we just tried to play with it. So I'll finish up with June, five rows back on your right. Hey, Garrett. So in, in the third inning after that home run, you know, the bases are loaded. How do you make sure, just given the stakes of the circumstances, that uh, you know, what's kind of going through your head to make sure that things don't kind of domino on you from just a mental standpoint on the mound? Um. I don't know. I just like, uh, 
like I said earlier, I just kind of visualized and prepared myself for traffic. And, um, and I thought that I certainly had quite a bit of uh, too many experiences with traffic this year. So I just kind of just leaned on like what, you know, what I normally do. And just, uh, I thought that we were, uh, really clear on on what pitches we wanted to execute in in those situations so uh at that point like i knew we were prepared and uh just went out and threw the pitch so Derek, congrats happy birthday to your dad thanks thanks